Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here today. The world is waking up to China's horrific human rights abuses. You've just heard about millions of Uyghurs being held in concentration camps and the Uyghur crisis. Maybe you've heard that many lawyers were disbarred in China only because they represented rights defenders, Tibetan, Hong Kongese, or Falun Gong practitioners. And the arbitrary detention of thousands of ordinary citizens and human rights defenders. The Chinese government doesn't want the world to know the truth. That's why I'm here today to tell you the story of one of the rights defenders, my husband, Ding Jiaxi. Actually, I, come, I want to tell you our story, the story of Jiaxi and me. My husband is a very successful lawyer. He took interest in the law and studied it when he was studying his master's degree in mechanical engineering. He passed his bar exam on his first try. I fell in love with Jesse the first time I met him. I will never forget about it. That was when I studied at university. One day, while I was working in the lab, Jiaxi walked in. He had the most captivating, sunny smile. I am a dep depressed person by nature and very pessimistic at that time. But Jiaxi was so upbeat and outgoing. He completely changed my whole outlook on life. After we began dating, my college friends almost not able to recognize me as Jiaxi brought out the sunshine in me. I remember the first question I asked Jiaxi was why he wanted to be a lawyer. He told me that since he was young, He'd seen too many people who couldn't speak for themselves, and he wanted to speak for them. He wanted to change our society and make people happier. And the best way he could think to do it was to become a lawyer. In 2003, he set up a law firm in Beijing named De Hong which means grand virtue in English. After decades, the Hong Law Firm had grown to over 20 employees and $4 million a year in revenue. However, while running a successful law firm, Jiaxi decided to pause that work and learn about issues that deeply concerned him. In 2012, Jiaxi went to the U.S. for eight months to conduct research at Fordham University. While there, he wrote a research paper comparing democratic processes in every country from East to West. He learned so much because the Internet isn't censored in the U.S. Unlike in China, he could look up anything and contact anyone. As soon as he came back to China, he felt the grip of Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, and their intense control of the Internet. He devoted himself full-time to activism. He advocated for citizens to understand and assert their rights protected in the Chinese Constitution like freedom of speech and assembly. But the CCP is terrified of its citizens talking to each other about their rights as citizens and human beings. When Jiaxi and his friends posted an open letter 
requesting Chinese top officials to disclose their assets. More than 7,000 people responded. This demand was a call both for government transparency and an end to government and party corruption. But not long after, public security officials in Beijing detained him and ultimately sentenced him three and a half years in jail for gathering a crowd to disturb public order. Paradoxically, that same year, Xi Jinping came to power and promised to stamp out all corruption in China. But it is clear now, 10 years after Xi took power, his goal wasn't to promote transparency, but to cement his own power and the CCP control over China. I made the difficult choice to move to the U.S. in 2003 to protect our two daughters and avoid being held hostage. In 2017, after Jia Xi was released from jail, he came to visit us in U.S. for two months. Everyone tried to convince him to stay in the U.S. My colleagues even told me I should hide his passport. I so desperately want him to stay, but he insisted, and I understood his mission was in China. As he expected, after Jia Xi returned to China, the police placed him under constant surveillance, and his movements and interaction in public were limited. In December 2019, he spent a weekend in Xiamen with some like-minded friends. They ordered takeout food and discussed the current affairs, but that alone was enough for Chinese police. They disappeared Jia Xi on December 26, 2019, disappeared his friend, well-known legal scholar Dr. Xu Ziyong, on February 15, 2020, and disappeared twice human rights lawyer Chang Weiping. They were all held un under RSDL, residential surveillance at a designated location a form of incommunicado detention that can last up to six months. For six months, I didn't know where Jia Xi was, why he was being detained, or if he was even alive. I now know that under RSDL, he was tightly strapped to a tiger chair and interrogated. He was deprived of sleep, harassed by loud noise, starved, dehydrated, kept in pitch darkness, and not allowed to even take a shower. What the CCP is doing is completely illegal. Jia Xi wasn't formally arrested until June 2020. He wasn't allowed to meet a lawyer for 13 months. And when he finally did, the lawyers were forced to sign confidentiality agreement, forbidden them from copying case files, discuss case details, interviewing with media, or speak publicly about the case. In August 2021, Chinese authorities indicted and charged him with subversion of state power a crime that could put him in prison for as long as the CCP likes, just for meeting up with fr his friend to discuss current events and human rights. I haven't spoken to Jia Xi since December 2019. I feel pain in my heart every day, every minute. The CCP says they don't use torture, but they do. They say Chinese, China is a democratic, but they spend, put people in jail just for attending a friend's 
gathering. When UN High Commissioner sent a report to China ask for Jiaxi's case, they replied only one sentence, says his rights all guaranteed. CCP is lying. They are not lying not only to Chinese, but also to international community. Not only on Jiaxi's case, but also on thousands and thousands of other inner citizens' case. Behind me stands thousands of Chinese families suffering as Jiaxi and me. I'm so lucky that I can stand here today speaking up for Jiaxi. You may not know that my friend Miss Li Chaochu was sent to RSDL for four months, denied access to lawyer for nine months, was indicted for inciting subversion of state power, and now still in detention. Just because she is the fiance of Dr. Li Xu Zhiyong and has spoken up for him. When we ignore the dictator's lies, it only empowers them, just like what happened with Putin and Ukraine. We must find ways to stop them covering truth and lying. The human rights abuses in China is a threat to human rights everywhere. It is a virus just like COVID-19 spread across every international border and infected every corner of the earth. We must stop the CCP now before it's too late. Thank you.